Herbert, good boy Little Hawk, attended the Carlisle Indian School for 10 years before he succumbed to pneumonia. According to records from his time there in the late 19th century, Herbert was a trusted friend and a young man who had a thirst for knowledge. He is one of four students who will be disinterred and returned from the cemetery at the Carlisle Barracks to his family. Along with Little Hawk, the U.S. Army will disinter Little Plume, George L., and Dora Brave Bull. The school opened in 1879 and ran through 1918, and keeping track of much of its history is the Carlisle Indian School Digital Resource Center at Dickinson College. So the uh, Digital Resource Center is a project that we started here at Dickinson uh, about five years ago. Uh, we received a grant from the Mellon Foundation to support uh, work in the digital humanities. So that was the seed money to allow us to begin digitizing uh, original documents of the Carlisle Indian School that are housed at the National Archives in Washington, D.C. For the last five years, archivists have been digitizing photos and records from the Carlisle Indian School, as well as publications printed there detailing life in the late 19th and early 20th century. They have 250,000 items digitized and still have a long way to go. Um, what's most important to us is to make sure that the things that we are preserving are easily accessible so that people who are trying to do research on their families, people who are uh, trying to study a particular time period or event, that they can have easy access to the material. Um, none of us wants to see collections just sitting on a shelf unused. Records show some students thrived at the school, others did not. Taken from their homes, forced to give up their ways, many led difficult lives, and many of them died. 180 students are still buried at the Carlisle Barracks. I, I think it's a really valuable and important step for the Army to be working with families uh, who may be interested in having remains of their family members returned home. Um, it's not always clear from the documentation why uh, students who passed away while they were at the school, why they were not returned home at that time. Many of them were, uh, but those that, that weren't, it's, it's not always clear the circumstances. Uh, but it's, it's wonderful that the Army is open to having those, uh, today's family members be able to ask for the return and uh, to have those ancestors uh, join other family members at, uh, at cemeteries back, back home. The archives reveal a little bit about the lives and deaths of these students. Little is known about Dora Brave Bull, who came to the school at the age of 16 in 1879. Little Plume arrived at the school when he was nine and died the following year. The Army conducted a disinterment of his grave last year, but found the remains of two unidentified students. George L. attended the school for only two years before bursting a blood vessel in his lungs and succumbing to the injury. After his death, his friends purchased his headstone to show their love for him. And Herbert Littlehawk made an impact on the school in his 10 years there and was remembered fondly for his strength of character. The, the one thing, the more we look at the documentation, the more um, complex the school becomes. I mean, on clearly the the, the mission was problematic from the beginning. The whole, the whole concept behind um, destroying people's cultures and sense of self as a means of educating them is um, not something anybody would condone or support today. It's, it's hard to put a blanket statement on um, the different individual students' experiences because they are all very different. And uh, so we really see the school as, you know, 8,000 plus different stories uh, when it comes to thinking about how to 
uh, look at the school, how to talk about the school in many ways. 